News and notes from the Nova Care Center today. Eagles continuing preparation for the Chicago Bears. John McMullen from 97.3 ESPN.com with the latest on the birds as they get ready for the Bears. And uh, we just got news, uh, John, that Carson Wentz has been named the uh, Pepsi Rookie of the Week for week number one. Just add it to the list of distractions, do you say? I don't know how much of a distraction that one is. I think the president talking about him is a bigger distraction. I, I, I think if he plays another week uh, like he did last week, probably Queen Elizabeth will be chiming in. So uh, this is just the fans voting, and he's the rookie of the week. No surprise there because he's got the, the highest-selling jersey. So everybody's pretty hyped on Carson Wentz. But you mentioned the preparation continues. Kind of got derailed today. There's a power outage at the Novacare complex, and they had to cancel uh, afternoon meeting. Hmm. So uh, interesting. So how does and that I, how does that I, affect how did that affect what uh you know they they had to cancel meetings? What what happens in those? Uh, did they they got to practice though, right? They did get to practice. They practiced this morning. Uh, they're just going to make it up tomorrow uh, because they have the extra day. So. Uh, it's just shifting things around. But I, I was joking to a, a number of the guys that if this if they were playing the Patriots this week, you would have heard some serious uh, <laughs> uh, conspiracy theories. But I, I don't think the Bears are smart enough to pull something like that off. And hey, the Eagles been all green too, John. Did they store up enough green energy to power the rest of the day? Uh, yeah, that, a lot of jokes <laughs> about that and Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, no solar. The solar power not working today. So uh, it's very, very strange uh, because it's a beautiful day uh, to lose power uh, on a day like this. John, uh, give us the latest, uh, the feeling on uh, Ertz and McKelvin, obviously those two guys, and, and how them not being there will affect the game plan. Well, I think it's pretty clear Ertz is not going to play, even though they're not going to say it. Uh, they're not fooling anybody. Uh, and, and Frank Wright, kind of, although he didn't say it because the coordinator spoke today, uh, he was already talking about Trey Burton sort of having to fill in. So he let the cat out of the bag. I, I think McKelvin is more of a game-time decision. And obviously the ex, extra day helps there. Uh, and Jim Schwartz mentioned that because he's a veteran player, he, he sort of understands how to get ready and he'll be ready. So uh, without practice time, if he's healthy enough to go. So I think there's a possibility, uh, certainly more so than Ertz, that he'll be able to play. And that's important because one of the few strengths of the Chicago Bears is the wide receiver position. So I don't think even with McKelvin, um, the Eagles match up all that well there at that particular spot. Uh, without them, it gets even worse. So I think it's pretty important uh, because the Bears have some big wide receivers, and it's going to be the one issue uh, the Eagles really, really have to worry about uh, as far as that offense goes. Yeah, John, you're talking about those big wide receivers, obviously Alshon Jeffrey, Kevin White. A uh, couple of six three guys. So who gets the majority of the reps if McKelvin can't go, and who whose job is it to shut those guys down? Well, if they can go one of two routes, they can put Ron Brooks on the outside, start him, and then when they go into the nickel, they could put Jalen Mills in. That would limit his snaps as as a rookie. Or they, if they want to keep Brooks more comfortable, just keep him in the slot. Uh, and have Jalen Mills start. Uh, either way, ne neither is a, a really, really big and rangy corner either way. So it's 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 a bad matchup. There's no getting around it, especially with Jeffrey. White's got a ton of talent, we know, uh, but he, he hasn't proven anything that uh, uh, yet, whereas Jeffrey is, is one of those receivers that is really, really difficult to match up with. And and, and Jim mentioned today, even when he's not open, he's open. And, and Jay Cutler will throw him the football, even if you think you got him locked down because his his catching radius is so large and, and the fact that uh, he can go up and high point the football. So that's, that's one issue uh, the Eagles are concerned about. All signs point towards Zach Ertz not going to play in this game. If he does not play, who gets more involved in the offense than Brent Selleck? Or Trey Burton? 
Well, I, say, I think it's going to be Brent, uh, even though I, I think people assume uh, Trey Burton because of his athleticism that maybe they'll try to get him uh, the football more. And, and they will because they'll need him. Uh, the Eagles want to play uh, a lot of 12 personnel with two tight ends. So he'll have a, a, a big opportunity. And I wrote about that on the website today. Uh, but Selleck is a veteran guy. And, and uh, he had about, uh, I think, 49% of the offensive snaps against the Browns. That's going to go up. Uh, and it's probably going to be in the 60s or 70s uh, because he's the Eagles' best tight end without – uh, Zach Ertz, and he's a little bit of a different player. He's more of a well-rounded player, uh, but obviously not as dangerous as a receiver. Uh, so it'll be a different way to go about things because uh, he can still do things as an outlet receiver, but he's probably not going to scare you uh, as a defense stretching down the seam. So uh, when you lose a player like Zach Ertz and he's not uh, out on the field, it's difficult because it's you generally can't replicate a player like that, and, and the Eagles certainly can't. John, let's talk Eagles defense for a second. They only blitzed RG3 two times last Sunday. Now, Cutler, of course, is a guy that he could be a good quarterback if he has some time and he could be deadly, but then he gets some pressure and he can make mistakes. And I know Jim Schwartz doesn't like to blitz a lot, but do they need to blitz more for them to be successful this week? Well, we'll see. I think that's one of the things you, you sure to, should pay a lot of attention to in the first quarter because he doesn't want to blitz, and if he can get there with four guys, he'd prefer to do that. And certainly, as we said, with the wide receivers, it's a lot easier to deal with if you can zone them up uh, as far as having uh, – instead of having press coverage on the outside, which generally you have to do if you blitz a lot. Uh the positives to that are the, the Bears don't have very good tackles. And, and, in fact, they might be the worst tandem in the league. So if Connor Barwin, Brandon Graham, Vinny Curry, if they can generate the pass rush without getting the blitz, that's what you prefer. Houston uh, blitzes a lot. And, and last week when they played the Bears, I think they sacked Cutler five or six times. They hit him 13 times. Uh, but they play a more gr aggressive style of defense, and, and that's what they feel comfortable with. Jim doesn't necessarily want to do that. But as you mentioned, uh, Pete, you might have to, because if you do allow Jay Cutler to get in into a comfort zone, he can hurt you. Uh, he's got tremendous arm talent. He can make all the throws. And uh, if all, all of a sudden – he starts feeling his oats back in that pocket. You're going to see some some balls that you go, wow, uh, because that's the kind of kind of quarterback he can be. Uh, so I think it's a very very fine line. If the Eagles don't get pressure early, I, I think it would be a prudent idea to start bringing the extra guy. John, I want to stick on the defensive side of the ball with some things. Uh, Michael Kendricks, you guys got a chance to talk to him. It's kind of the first time that he's really spoken since kind of. Um, being told his fate that he's really not going to have a big role on this team. Uh, how do you handle it? He's not happy, and, and he's frustrated, frustrated and understandably so. I think any player wants to play and would be in the same situation. Uh, but I also think he's finally the grips with it and realizes, hey, at some point somebody's going to get nicked up and he's going to get an opportunity. And if he... If he does something with that opportunity, all of a sudden, uh, the plan, we talked about it with Carson Wentz. We talked about plan. The plan is he's not going to play that much, and he's only going to play in the in the base defense. But all it does is it takes a, a sprained ankle to Jordan Hicks or Nigel Bradham, and, and he's back in there. And the nickel, and he has an opportunity uh, to play uh, well and play better. Uh, and if he does that, who knows? He could be back in the plant, back in the nickel defense. So I think he's finally realized that. He's finally accepted it. And he's got to stay ready for when that opportunity does come uh, because it's almost guaranteed uh, in a 16-game NFL season, the Eagles are going to need him. Uh, and we'll see what happens when they do. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, covering the Eagles and the Bears. Of course, uh, you'll hear that game Monday night here 
on 97.3 ESPN. Uh, what's the Bears' uh, pass rush look like? We know Willie Young, kind of the uh, you know 30 years old, kind of like a journeyman pass rusher for them, maybe one of their best defenders on that team. But, uh, you know, you got Lane Johnson back another week here. Jason Peters, the Eagles line still intact here. Is that – Something the Eagles should be concerned about. Should Carson Wentz, is Carson Wentz going to see a lot of pressure from this Bears team? Can they generate pressure? I think they're going to try, certainly, uh, because it is a, a, a rookie quarterback. And I think John Fox is smart enough to realize you have to do everything possible to make him, Carson Wentz in this case, very, very uncomfortable. So uh, they play a 3 4. It's going to be those edge guys. Uh, it's going to be Willie Young. It's going to be Leonard Floyd, who's a rookie. They also have Lamar Houston. Uh, but probably the best pass rusher is Pernell McPhee, and he's not healthy. He's not out there. So uh, they have some issues on the defensive side of the ball. And as I kind of mentioned yesterday, when Doug was asked what he's worried about, he, he kind of hemmed and hawed and, and was trying to think about something before finally coming up with the pass rush. And you talk about a guy like Willie Young, he's – he he does have the ability ability to get around the edge. He's very athletic. He's very speedy, uh, but he's not all that consistent. And I think if you look at the Eagles, uh, Jason Peters, Lane Johnson, as long as Lane's there and he's still there, uh, those are top level players, and they should be able to handle uh, what the Bears throw at them. Talking with John McMullen, ninety seven three ESPN dot com. You know, um, we got. Uh, the Eagles, as Pete kind of asked the question about the the pressure that then not getting to him, we had Sal on earlier. He gave us some interesting stats. Jay Cutler seven and three uh, against Jim Schwartz defenses, uh, played him ten times, fifteen touchdowns, five interceptions, and I guess that's you know the interesting part about that was he said, and in those ten games he was sacked twenty eight times. Uh, so they did get to him a little bit, but we know that Cutler's the kind of guy that when you pressure him, he seems to make mistakes. But I think this is an interesting matchup because, as we kind of chronicled earlier, the Bears have these two six three wide receivers, and we know the Eagles are banged up, but it's the kind of game that could be frustrating if you can't get to Cutler because he's the kind of guy who has a strong arm, can make some throws that RG3 cannot make. I mean, that could be a, a big difference maker that Cutler can make some throws stronger arm than Robert Griffin the third does. Oh, there's no doubt that Jay can make every single throw you want from an NFL quarterback. As far as arm talent goes, he's he's top tier. He's as good as it gets. But uh, and, and Sal's right when he brings up those old numbers. But I, I think you have to realize that when the Bears were playing the Lions, when Jim Schwartz was there, Chicago was generally a much better team. And one of the reasons they were is, Charles Leno and, and Bobby Massey weren't playing tackle for Jay Cutler. <laughs> they had better options outside uh, trying to protect them. So uh, I think the talent level uh, has taken uh, sort of a nosedive for Chicago at the present time. They're trying to rebuild, but they're in the process of that. Uh, and, and, yeah, I mean, this is the NFL. And while I say those names are not impressive, and they certainly – for instance, Connor Barwin, who, who, who uh, Frank Reich, uh, excuse me, Jim Schwartz singled out as having a really, really good game last week against Joe Thomas. Hey, on paper, this looks a lot easier for him. Uh, whether it turns out to be that way, uh, we'll have to see. Same thing for Brandon Graham. This shapes up as a lot easier for him. Uh, whether those guys can take advantage of those matchups and put the kind of pressure on Jay Cutler you need remains to be seen because you're right, and that's what I said before. If you let him get comfortable, he's going to hurt you. Uh, so I think a lot of this game will come down to the fact whether the Eagles can get pressure on Jay Cutler or not. Yeah, and uh, one thing's for sure, the Eagles uh, with that wide nine pressure uh, Schwartz, as you mentioned, he doesn't like the blitz all that much, but – the two tackles, as you chronicled, not very good. Uh, but the interior of the line, that's where I think the Eagles each and every week are going to have to really hang their hat on. Fletcher Cox and Benny Logan really opening things up. If they can cause the double teams in the middle like they did against Cleveland last week, that is where Philly, you know, it, it could be one of those games where if they're hanging, if the game's close around half, you got to feel better. 
Yeah, you certainly do. And, and, and that is going to be an interesting matchup because that's strength against strength. That's where the Bears are very strong. They, they have Kyle Long, who's a, a Pro Bowl level guard, and then they signed Josh Sitton, uh, who got cut by Green Bay, but it was cut for different reasons. And the fact that they didn't like him in the locker room was a heck of a player. He's been a Pro Bowl guard for years. So that's the strength of the Bears' offensive line. And it truly is a strength where they get hurt. They had a rookie center, Grass, who was injured. Uh, he's not there. So they got hurt at that particular position. But when you look at the guards, long and sitting, they're, as I said, you might not see a worse pair of tackles all year than you're going to see this week. You might not see a pair of guards better all year than you're going to see this week. Hmm. So. Uh, the Bears are interesting up front, and it's uh, it's really good on the inside, really bad on the outside. And we'll see how it how it, it obviously with Fletcher Cox and Benny Logan, uh, the Eagles think they match up well against anybody, and that's usually true. Uh, but it's strength against strength this week. Hey, John, uh, Mike likes to make fun of me because I always bring this position up, but uh, they did the Bears did cut Robbie Gould very late in the preseason, picked up Connor Barth. Uh, as their kicker, could that be the difference in the ball? Well, Robbie Gold was uh, a great kicker for a lot of years. So that's one of those things that, that scratches ahead. You know, everybody, although Adam Vinatieri would be the obvious exception, uh, who seems to perform at a high level no matter how old he gets. But, yeah, I mean, the, the Bears were spoiled for, for a very long time. Uh, with with Gould, and it's very unlikely that you'll have that same kind of consistency year after year after year. That's just the nature of it. So, I mean, the kicking game can always come into it, uh, and we saw it really in the first week. If you think about uh, bookending the, the, the big matchups uh, on Thursday night, it was Carolina against Denver. Uh, a bad snap on a field goal decided it. Uh, and then you had New England, Arizona on Sunday night, a bad snap on a field goal decided it. So the kicking game, hey, you're right to bring it up. It could be in play every week because these NFL games seem to all be one-score games late. Well, only the Eagles have a long snapper that made it to the final three of America's Got Talent. So maybe <laughs> And a lot of people, uh, we're all biased, and, and John's such a, a good guy. Uh, everybody wanted him to win. Uh, but yeah, to get that far uh, is obviously pretty uh, pretty impressive. And I think uh, I'm not a big America's Got Talent fan, but I think a 12 year old girl won, and that poor girl is feeling the wrath of the Philly uh, fans because they're not ha- they're not happy with it. Well, she's not old enough to go at the casino. No, Eddie, uh, we know Caleb Sturgis <laughs> missed a kick last week too, John. And that was a crazy play, by the way, because I was sitting in 135. And I saw oh, the yeah, guy saw put his arms up, and then the other guy yeah, waved yeah, no. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, well, which one's yeah. correct? And then the other guy quit uh, running over and was like, what are you doing? Uh, unfortunately, the guy who waved no was correct. I have no idea. The, the, the other guy just kind of fell asleep, and he's like, ah, it looks good. Yeah, uh, it, but, yeah, that yeah. Was, it was weird. On TV, it was clear that he missed it. And the one yeah. guy's saying it's good, the other guy's not. I'm like, oh, my gosh. These <laughs> That's guys. one of those things where you're, you're daydreaming, and, and, you, and you think you – you're looking over at the other guy, and you think he's going to raise his arms, and you, you go along, and all of a sudden uh, you look bad. So that was – yeah, it wasn't that close. So John McMull- who knows what he was thinking. John McMullen's with us. His pick right now at 973ESPN.com. You can go get his pick for the Eagles and Bears game. We'll get that from him on Monday. John also, of course, covers the league nationally for today's pigskin.com. John, i got to get your thoughts on Greg Roman getting uh, fired today fall guy or fair i don't know how it's fair (laughs) uh you give up 378 passing yards you give up almost three 100 yard receivers one guy had 92 you give up a 100 yard rusher with three touchdowns and you fire the offensive coordinator makes perfect sense uh (laughs) obviously it's a mess in 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 buffalo but when you're the uh, defensive coach who hires his brother as a, as a defensive assistant, uh, you're not going to say, I stink. So you have to have some kind of fall guy, and that was Greg Roman. But the the, the bottom line is everybody's probably going to be out of a job. So Greg just comes 
gets to come back to South Jersey a little bit early. Yeah, uh, according to uh, Alex Marvez of the Sporting News, mm-hmm. uh, the Bills front office forced Rex Ryan to fire Greg Roman as a sacrificial lamb following the embarrassing loss. And uh, per Marvez, the front office leaned on Rex to make a significant change in hopes of appeasing a disgruntled fan base. You know what happens when you listen to the fan base there, John? Yeah, yeah. You, you tend to be sitting next to him very, very quickly. And uh, there's a good chance uh, that, that yeah. there's a good chance Rex is sitting with him. Yeah. Uh, and hey, Rex, I wrote about it last night on today's Pigskin after the game before he fired Greg Roman. Rex, I, I think Bill Cower on the, on the telecast gave him some prudent advice, and it, it was basically saying embrace the process of, of making your team better. No matter where your team is, just embrace, embrace that process. Rex has always been about bragging. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to beat Bill Belichick. I'm going to win the Super Bowl. And when it doesn't happen, yeah, when it doesn't happen, you just look bad. Uh, and, and you should really just try to be getting better. And right now you got an 0-2 team, so try to make it better. But Rex will be out there. I guarantee you he'll be blustering. We're going to turn this thing around. We're going to win this. We're going to win that. And and this might be his last opportunity. He's probably going to be out, as I said, after the season. And I don't know if he's going to get another head coaching job. I would doubt it. I would seriously doubt it. Um, by the way, i got to ask your opinion on this. Um, Frank Reich today compared Carson Wentz <laughs> to a combination of Andrew Luck and Jim Kelly. Oh, wow. Uh, some high praise well, there. I, yeah. I, that's also going to be up on today's pigskin today. That was a mistake. I mean, we've been talking all week about uh, uh, people over uh, going overboard with Carson Wentz, the president talking about him, having the highest selling jersey. And all of a sudden, Frank gets that question. And at first, he did the right thing. He deflected it. And then all of a sudden, he goes, Andrew Locke and Jim Kelly. And there was a lot of context in it. Don't get me wrong. He, he explained it. He was talking a, in a physical stature uh, and some of the things he can do from his skill set, not saying he was that same player. But you know how the media is. You know how the fans are. They're not going to take the context into it. They're going to run with it and say he compared him to Andrew Luck and, and a Hall of Famer and Jim Kelly. And, and I think probably as soon as that press conference ended, he probably wished he wouldn't have said that, and he, he probably got told by Doug to temper it uh, a little bit in the future. And you just you, you got to be smarter with that kind of stuff. Uh, John McMullen, ninety seven three ESPN.com, today's pigskin dot com for all his national uh, football coverage as well at J F McMullen on the sports best. Thanks, John. Enjoy the games. Hey, thank you, guys.